Summary of the Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill An unnamed parent teaches their child about the past of the protectorate and the day of sacrifice throughout the story. Years ago, the parents lost a child to the offering, and people say that every year, an evil witch wants a baby. A long time ago, the witch made dragons make the volcano blow up, killing a wizard in the process. She put poison in the once life-giving forest and bog. The parent said there was no point in standing up to the witch. In the present of the book, a young man named Antine is taking part in his first day of sacrifice. It's horrible, the mother won't give up her baby, and Antine's uncle Gerland doesn't even stay in the woods to make sure the witch gets the baby. The narrator explains that this is because there is no witch in Gerland. The witch is a story that makes it easy to keep people sad and in line. But Gerland didn't know that a kind witch named Zan has been saving kids who were left on the side of the road for the past 500 years. She doesn't ask why their moms leave them behind, but she feels like it's her job to save them. After giving them stars, Zan takes them to the free cities, which is why they are called star children. This year, Zan finds a baby with a scar that looks like a half moon. She takes her time going with the baby, and after 10 days, the baby eats moonlight by chance. This makes the baby grow up. Zan knows that this means she can't leave the baby with anyone else, so she names the baby Luna and decides to keep her. The swamp monster at home the dragonling Firion is very happy, but Glurk is not pleased. Firion is about the size of a dove, but he thinks he is a simply enormous dragon and lives in the land of the giants. Glurk and Zan keep a close eye on Luna as she grows because they know that her power will soon burst. They know they should remember something and that sadness is bad, but they don't know why. When Luna turns five, her power starts to come out. Luna doesn't know what she's doing, and Zan doesn't know how to teach her. Zan's health is also getting worse. Zan finally puts Luna in a cocoon and goes back to the old house to help her remember her master, Zosimos. After nine days of studying, she comes up with a spell to put Luna's magic in a small grain in her brain, making her a good student of magic. It will open when Luna is 13 years old, and Zan will die at that time. Luna feels different when she wakes up. She goes into trances whenever she sees or hears something about magic, which worries Zan. But Zan tells herself that Luna will be fine and that thinking about what might happen in the future is too sad and dangerous. In the protectorate, Antine still can't get over the baby being taken from the crazy woman. He goes to see the leader of the Sisters of the Star, Sister Ignatia. She lets him go see the crazy woman, whose cell is full of paper birds and maps that say she is here. Antine is scared, so the crazy woman's birds start to attack him. He gets terrible scars on his face, and he quits the Council of Elders. Antine loves being a builder, but he feels like he's missing something important. His status goes up, but every time he walks by the tower, he thinks of the crazy woman. He talks to Sister Ignatia one day. He thinks she looks strangely happy until Sister Ignatia asks him to help a former sister, Ethine, move out of the tower. Ethine broke with tradition and left the sisterhood, so Sister Ignatia asks him to help. Antine feels hopeful because Ethine is the only person who can look him in the eyes without flinching. The crazy woman, on the other hand, can't remember her own name, but she doesn't see why she should. She knows she's crazy, but she also knows that her crazy mind has helped her find magic and make paper come out of the cracks in the world. She feels awful about hurting Antine, but she keeps a close eye on him. The crazy woman now knows where the witch lives because of her magic. She makes maps that lead into the forest, and Antine finds one of them one day. As Luna grows, she gets headaches and feels like she's going to pass out. Zan goes to the free cities twice a year, but she only brings Luna with her once a year, which bothers Luna. Luna starts to notice that Firion doesn't seem to ever grow up. When Luna thinks about Firion in the morning, she has a flash of a woman with black hair. When Firion calls her, she wakes up crying. She says she's just thinking about how much she loves her family. At the same time, Antine gets in the way of Zan as she tries to save another abandoned baby. 
Antine is now married to Ethine and full of hope, so he thinks he might be able to talk to the witch. Later that same year, Zan takes Luna to the Free Cities. Even though it's clear that Zan's health is getting worse, she claims that it's not. During the trip, Luna sits down with the star children and tells them about a woman with black hair that she remembers. Zan says they aren't true, but neither he nor Luna will talk about what's really going on. Luna tries out telling stories about a girl who can't remember things and a grandma who lies. She and Firion both fall asleep one night. When Luna wakes up and finds that Firion's nose burned her thigh, she tells him to leave. Firion finds himself in a strange place, and even though he tells himself that his feet always stomp and his wings always blow leaves off trees, he knows that this is strange. He finds a small pair of boots, and then he hears a growl. He can remember that Zan told him to call her if he ever needed help. He calls out for Zan, but he doesn't come, so he calls out for Luna. Firion wakes up in Luna's bed again. The next morning, Luna finds a strange pair of boots. She throws them in her trunk and chooses to ask Glurk about them because they hurt her head. She forgets about the boots by the time she gets outside. Luna writes a letter for Zan and goes to the top of the hill to draw. She is being followed by a crow, and Luna remembers that she made the crow yesterday. Luna goes into a dream and draws while Firion sneaks along and falls asleep. Afternoon, she wakes up and runs back home because everything seems strange. Still, Zan is in bed. Luna finds out that she drew a plan that shows how to get to the Protectorate in great detail. Antine also uses a trick to get the council to let him talk. He says that he will go into the bush and kill the witch because Ethine is pregnant and their child will be the next one to be killed. Luna wakes up with a pounding headache and walks to a big stone. It gives her access to a room full of paper. She can read the word magic, and the papers tell her how artists enchanted a child 500 years ago. This kid in Zosimos tried to fight someone called the Sorrow Eater, but Zosimos died. Luna finds out from the papers that the child in question was named Zan. Sister Ignacia tells Gerland in the Protectorate that she will go into the bush and kill Antine herself. The witch must kill him, she says. She seems to take joy in Gerland's pain. Zan wishes she could tell Luna everything, but she knows she can't. Zan leaves a note for Luna and turns herself into a bird to fly to the Protectorate. There, she finds a baby that was left behind. Luna finds the note later, but she doesn't finish reading it before tearing it up and going into the bush with the crow. However, a piece of the note crawls into her pocket. The crazy woman sees Antine walk into the bush and thinks it's too dangerous for Antine to go alone because the witch lives in the tower and will follow him. She makes paper out of the bars on her window, and the paper birds take her into the forest. Sister Ignacia tells Gerland later that morning that she will deal with Antine. They talk about how Antine's journey gives people hope. Glurk and Firion find the empty house and Zan's note in the swamp. It was fixed with Luna's magic, but it's missing the word magic. Glurk thinks that Firion should grow up, so he and Firion go to help Zan and Luna. They can tell from the way the volcano is shaking that it is about to blow again. The crazy woman's birds drop her off in a swamp, where she learns that the name of her baby is Luna. She puts on a pair of boots she found and starts taking care of the animals. Luna is scared, especially when a group of paper birds lands on her. But when they guard her from Sister Ignacia, who is looking for her seven league boots, she decides that they are okay. Sister Ignacia goes to get them from the crazy woman and says to herself, I'm glad I started all the stories about the witch in the Protectorate. At the same time, Antine, who is scared, throws a rock at a bird, who is actually Zan, and breaks her wing. He is always with Zan. Firion starts to grow at a frighteningly fast rate. Back in the Protectorate, Ethine finds out that Sister Ignacia is gone and starts to plan a revolt. Sister Ignacia locks up the sisters who aren't kind and opens the library for everyone because she knows that Sister Ignacia is the witch who makes people sad. Mothers who have lost kids start to see them getting older for no reason, and this gives them hope for the first time. 
Luna remembers being a child all of a sudden. She saw Zan make a scrying glass and fell into a daze. Zan told her in Glurk that they couldn't tell Firion the truth because he would tell Luna that Zan is a witch, and Luna wouldn't be able to see Zan anymore. Luna makes a scrying device on the spot and asks it to show her Zan. It shows a bird to her. Antine starts talking about the day of sacrifice and tells Zan that he's going to kill the witch. Zan tries to convince herself that Luna is safe at home. Zan is shocked to find out that the babies she saved were meant to be killed as sacrifices. Antine hears the sound of someone walking up the hill. At the top of the hill, paper birds bring together Luna, the crazy woman, Zan, and Antine. Antine sees that none of these women are the witch he is looking for when Luna recognizes the crazy woman as her mother and turns Zan back into a person. Zan says he's sorry for taking the kids who were left on the street and asks for forgiveness. Sister Ignatia, also known as the Sorrow Eater, shows up as the three women stand. Antine is confused, but the crazy woman tells him that Sister Ignatia is the witch and tells Luna that a part of her is still human. Sister Ignatia's heart is wrapped in a pearl, and when Luna looks inside, she sees that it is full of sadness. Just as Firion and Glurk bound over the hill, she opens it. Now that Firion knows that Sister Ignatia killed his mother, he threatens to kill her. After Zan and Glurk calm him down, Firion says that they need to get to the Protectorate to save everyone from the volcano's explosion. Luna joins hands with Zan and the crazy woman in the Protectorate, and Zan shows her how to make bubbles that protect everyone. After what happened, everyone in the Protectorate still has hope. They put the elders in jail, and Luna starts going to the free cities to tell the star children the truth about their parents and that their hearts can always hold more love. Luna finds out that Adara is the name of her mother. Sister Ignatia and Zan's health gets worse, and Zan dies of happiness on the day that the first star children arrive in the Protectorate. Glurk brings her with him to the bog. The parent tells the child that the kind and giving which took over the Protectorate, which is why they're doing well and living well. About the author. Kelly Barnhild was born and raised in Minneapolis, and she went to St. Catherine University in St. Paul, Minnesota, to study creative writing. She has worked as a cleaner, a park ranger, a bartender, and a middle school and high school teacher over the course of her life. Ted Barnhill, her husband, is an engineer who creates homes that are good for the environment. The two of them have three children. After the birth of her second child, Barnhill began writing short stories. Since then, her stories have been published in a number of books and magazines. She has also written a number of books for kids, including Sewers and the Rats That Love Them and The Bloody Book of Blood, which are both nonfiction stories. The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which is one of her books, won the Newbery Medal in 2017. Barnhill lives in Minnesota. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.